What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. I'm back at you with another litter pulling video. I have my snake hook, if you saw my other video, you guys know this is my favorite snake hook. I got some tools next to me, I got my bin that I'm just gonna use to keep the mother away from me, and then I got a couple little boxes that I'm gonna put the babies into. I've done these videos before, I almost didn't do this one because I said no, you guys have seen it, but every litter is different, every litter is special, so I wanted to do this video. I looked at it this morning and I'm saying this is a really cool litter. So the litter we're gonna be pulling today is a blood to a sharp sun glow that is 100% het blood. So in this litter, haven't looked at it in detail yet, I just saw she laid, I was watching her, she started to roam her cage, which is usually the first sign that they're starting to lay or look for a place to lay. So I'm assuming we're gonna get some hypos, some normals, some bloods and some hypo bloods that are all gonna be 100% het for sharp albino. Really exciting litter for me because I need some more of these babies to hold back and I'm sure a lot of you guys out there are looking for the same stuff. So with all that said, let's flip the camera and dive into the video. So this is the mom, she is an adult blood and that is her babies in the back corner. She's done laying. I checked on her this morning and she looked like she was still pushing a little bit. So I didn't wanna bother her too much. She's a really good girl. This is probably her third or fourth litter with me. Really pretty snake. She's uh, again, probably a 2012, pretty old animal. And you can see those babies in the back. Let me see if I can zoom in. And if you can look at, you know, there's a blood, you can tell by their eye color for the most part. She's trying to, camera's trying to pick up on the mom snake, but really good mix. So I'm gonna pull these babies, we'll go into a time lapse. We'll see what we got. All right, so I have all of her babies here and because I didn't want to stress her out too much and where I am in this rack location is I just put kind of everything in one, slugs and all. While I'm here, I'm also going to clean up some of the bedding in here. So she's finally realized I took her babies from her. I'm gonna clean up a little bit of the bedding here. She's pushing around, still trying to get them out of their egg sac. Really good looking litter so far. I would guess at least 15 to 20 babies. So I'm just gonna use this other bin right here and I'm going to get all this kind of substrate out. I'll give it a better clean later today, but I want to get the bulk of it up so she can start going back to her normal mode. They it did all look like they were there, but it's always good to check underneath the water bowl and look around just to make sure you got them all. So we're going to do the typical thing, flip the camera around or go to a different spot, wash the babies off, separate them. There are some stillborns in here. There's some slugs like this one here. This I believe is a stillborn. Uh, almost you know, partially developed. We'll take a better look at these once we get off the camera or once we get off this ladder that I'm standing on. Before we go into the primary wash, I wanna show you what I just pulled out of the cage. So this is the extra bedding. This is just gonna get tossed into the barrel that I have next to me. So that one's done. And then before we do that, I want to, or should say before we wash these babies off, I just wanna pull the, you know, the larger chunks of bedding and get rid of that. That way it's not going down my sink drain or gonna clog anything. And I wanna just kinda of get a somewhat of a count of slugs. I always like to know what the mom did every year. So. I got definitely two slugs here. If you have monitors or something like that, you can repurpose them and feed them to them. Totally fine. So I got two slugs there. I know that there's another one in here. Three slugs, and what I'll do is I will write on her bin, she gave me X babies. It could have been, you know, 15 live, one stillborn, and five slugs, whatever it actually ends up being. But right now it's just three slugs. I thought I saw another one in here, but that could have been the stillborn's egg sac. I also want to take a good look at that. So this is the stillborn, and unfortunately this one didn't make it. Really pretty looking baby. Um, these babies will color up over the next couple days. I want to just take a second and look at this one. Again, if you had uh, some other monitors or stuff like that, you could repurpose. 
but this was a baby that started to develop and for some reason just didn't make it. And that's just kind of the fact of what we're doing here. Sometimes the babies don't make it. Sometimes the parents don't make it, which is why I always say, if this is a pet snake, do not breed it. Because if you cannot, especially if it's like a family pet with kids and stuff involved, if you cannot manage dealing with a snake that is gonna potentially pass when you breed it, just as important for males as females, males can breed themselves to death then it's not something you should do with that animal. Now, all of my snakes are breeder animals, but at the same time, if you don't know what you're doing, you're not gonna pick up on little cues of what the snake is telling you, and it could put the snake in even more risks. Just like people. People die during pregnancy. It was more common years ago, but you know now medical advances have made that a little bit more, uh, or I should say a little bit less frequent, but it still does happen, especially in places where we don't have ready access to medicine. So you gotta think about it in that sense. Breeding and having babies in general is risky so if you are not okay with that risk do not breed that animal so now that I'm just making a mess with all the goo in here I'm just trying to show you exactly what I do because there were a couple steps I missed in my previous videos but uh, yeah let's go take these to the sink and wash them off I may just do that and come back with a bunch of clean babies for you so here we have all the babies cleaned off it was about 15 babies these are all my bloods and hypo bloods really pretty looking. I, I've been noticing that the albino tends to lighten the bloods up a little bit, or the het albino. So at least that's what I've seen. They're not as deep and rich as some of the other bloods. They almost have this kind of like anatheristic look to them like they have on the tails here. We'll see how they develop, but some really pretty snakes in here. I actually uh, forgot to mention that the male is also a jungle. So there are some jungle babies like this this one right here, really, really pretty head, some eyes, really good looking stuff. And then this is the hypos and normals. These are all 100% het blood and het sharp. One I will note because I like to just call it out every time is that, you know, there are some uh, kinks in this one. This is not a genetic, this, uh, or genetic thing. This is just something that has to do with de the developing of the baby in the embryo. So this baby must have been kind of curled up in this funny looking position as it was developing. The head scales and underneath the neck kinks themselves together and the, the spine is kinked. So I may, I, you guys, if you've watched any of my videos, I'm a sucker for stuff like this. I don't like to euthanize anything, especially if it has a chance. This one is borderline. I thought, you know, this is probably something that we would euthanize. But at the same time, what I would likely do is give it a chance, see how it does. If it does okay and starts eating, I'll probably just give it away to somebody if they want to take it in as a pet or see how it does. But as long as they eat, they shouldn't have any issues. This one does have a pretty significant kink, so I don't think it's going to do very well, but I want to at least give it a shot. I mean, that's what we're doing this for is to make babies, whether they're perfect or not. And I don't like to euthanize something just because it's not perfect. If this can be a good pet for somebody, why not just let somebody have a nice pet? So with all that, I have my bin next to me, as I've mentioned in other videos. These babies are all nice and clean. we will take a look at some of them here, like this one really standing out nicely to me. This is a hypo blood, really pretty looking, almost a T-positive looking. And as they develop, this T-positive glow will, will crisp up a little bit more. This is not a T-positive baby, but it, this is almost what a T-positive would look like. I don't know if you guys have seen the blood VPIs. Very, very similar looking to this. So you really need to look at a more mature animal Specifically something that has, you know, six months to a year on it or so. That's when I think bloods look their best. Or actually, when bloods look their best is right after their first shed. But once they're about six months to a year or so, you can really kind of see what their true colors are going to look like. Really awesome animals. Anybody who knows me knows bloods are some of my favorite snakes out there. Uh, and I just can't get enough of them, which is why I keep making them. And these are going to be some holdbacks here. I'll likely keep the ones couple that I just showed. This is a really nice paler looking blood, but uh, also likely jungle. You can see the jungleish traits, these kind of softened saddle, softened body, lateral stripe down the side. That's what I'm looking for in a jungle. Uh, the head stamp isn't so much there. So I'll have to see how this baby develops. It is telling me all the other jungle traits, but uh, could just be a really nice hypo blood. So. With all that said, let's start putting them in this bin and I will move them into here. They're gonna sit into this bin with, with just a little bit of water. You can kind of see there's just enough water. It's not even covering the whole bottom, uh, especially at with the table at a slight, in, a slight tilt. 
but once they're in this water, they're going to stay there for about 24 hours. I'm going to change the water over and I'll put bedding in it after that. You could put them right on bedding, but I find that that gets a little gunky after a while. So yeah, we'll just take a look. And as I'm putting them in, these are just really pretty. I mean, that's going to be an awesome looking adult. A lot of people like to go for the deep, rich reds. I tend to gravitate towards more of the uh, almost, I'll call it faded look where their pattern becomes really cool and faded. I have one from last year that's still up on the website and it's just such a really cool animal. Now, in terms of getting pick of the litter on these, I now have a Patreon, go check it out, www.patreon.com slash Jason's Exotic Reptiles. It'll be in the description below. Thank you to all my existing patrons. What I am going to do, and any new patrons, I appreciate you guys wanting to join. I'll mention it again at the end of the video. Look at that that blood. I mean, that's an awesome looking animal. That, this is going to be a really pretty one as well. But where I'm going with the Patreon account is one of the tear levels, or a couple of the tear levels, is you get first pick of the litter. How I decided to do that is I will post a video on Patreon so you can see them, but uh, only patrons at that level and at that tear are going to be able to buy them at that point in time. And then within the next uh, 24 hours or week or so, I'll then post them up on the website and everybody else has access. So I'm still trying to work through the kinks of that. This is, I think this is the one that I had earlier because it just keeps standing out to me as a really pretty looking snake. Uh, I'm still trying to work through all the kinks of that, but I think it's going really well. I have uh, quite a few or a couple new patrons and it's uh, it's been fun for me to do this. This one is, I mean, these little highlights in between the saddles are gonna be really pretty once these animals uh, shed out and color up a little bit. They're all gonna be a little gray and dull. So once they're born, just like uh, normal Colombian boas or normal boa imperator, once they do their first shed, they start showing more of their crisp, true colors. It's uh, a lot of babies look anatheristic once they're, you know, first come out. And then over the next week and two, they start to develop more colors once they're out of their, their mom. So overall, I believe it was 15 babies. I'll have to do another count uh, before I, you know, kind of close up the bin and write the, the final numbers. But one thing I do find impressive always is, I gotta watch some of these babies are trying to crawl out on me, is the normals. Even the normals are awesome, especially when you start mixing the hets in there. I Hets are not visual, but I do find that some hets tend to bleed through a little bit. And uh, these don't have the pink bellies, but they do have this really cool lateral striping that just pops out. It, it's And I don't typically see that on just a regular normal with no hats in it. So I do think that that's a blood or potentially a sharp or potentially a blood and sharp uh, hat doing that because they're just really pretty looking normals. Uh, so these babies, when they go up, they'll be ranging from... I don't know, I guess anywhere from, I have to do some price research, but about three, 400 all the way up to, uh, I guess a couple thousand for the really pretty hypo bloods that are het sharp. So that's kind of the price range. People ask, you know, is it profitable to breed snakes? And I say, yes, it is, as long as you can do it the right way. Too many people try to jump into these projects and they make really expensive babies, but they cannot sell them. This is a perfect litter in my example, or I should say in my opinion, of what you should try for because what you can do with a litter like this is these uh, babies, you know, some of the normals, the hypos, they're gonna sell really fast. Some of these bloods are gonna sell at a moderate rate. These hypo bloods will sell at a somewhat moderate rate, but it gives you a good spread. And honestly, I mean, I'm gonna keep a couple of these really pretty hypo bloods back and it just gives me my whole backs, but it also continues to fund projects by allowing me to sell others when some of these more holdback quality animals are at a, a more attainable price, people will still buy a handful of these, but once they're at a more stable price, I shouldn't say stable, things are pretty stable. Once they're at a more, uh, I guess, a, yeah, attainable or achievable price, then that's when uh, people will start to buy these rounds. And at that point, you'll have adults, you'll be breeding, and you're gonna be in good shape. So if you're going to breed boas, I mean, just a rough guess, this is probably a fifteen dollars to a $20,000 litter right here. My initial investment was about $2,000. I'm digressing a little bit on the blood video, but I do want to show people how to make money breeding boas at the same time 
people are selling a dream. You're going to become a billionaire. No, out of this fifteen to twenty thousand dollar litter, they'll probably be. Let's say it's a twenty thousand dollar litter. I haven't added it up. I mean, two thousand, two thousand, two thousand. There's six thousand. Yeah, it's probably about a fifteen to twenty thousand dollar litter. I'll probably sell ten thousand dollars worth of babies, and I will probably keep back about five thousand, and those will be my future breeding stock. I have a diverse collection already, so I won't breed these two together, but I have babies from last year from a different pairing. They'll go together nicely with these. So all of that said, let's flip the camera around, close the video out. I hope you all enjoyed that video. I know I do a lot of these litter videos, but again, this is the most exciting part of breeding for me. So I appreciate it and I hope you guys too. If you are interested in getting more direct access to me. I've had so many requests of people asking for mentorships or just can I get a one-on-one -on -one call and things like that. So that is the reason why I started the Patreon. If you're interested in that, go check out my Patreon. I said in, earlier in the video, I'm gonna mention it at the end, www.jasons, oh, that's my website, www.jasonsexoticreptiles.com. Patreon is www.patreon.com slash Jason's Exotic Reptiles. So if you're interested in that one-on-one -on -one mentorship, I have all levels from a thank you for doing what you do, keep it up, all the way up to I am gonna get you know a couple one-hour monthly calls with me. We're gonna sit down, we can talk about anything you want from morph identification all the way through how do I breed. I have one patron right now and he's like, I wanna get kind of started, how am I gonna breed boas, but I also wanna do that those monthly check-ins. We can tweak and perfect his system the whole way and I guarantee he's gonna be successful with breeding boas, Burmese pythons, colubrids. I've bred quite a bit. My bread and butter is obviously boas and Burmese pythons, but I have a you know a whole bunch of side projects that a lot of people don't even know about. So if you're interested in hearing more about that, go check it out. Go support this channel. But the best thing you guys can do is give this video a thumbs up and share it and like it. Do whatever you can to promote the channel growth. The more subscribers we have, the easier it is for me to make these videos and get new video co content and topics out to you guys. So with all that said, I appreciate you all watching, following. Make sure to hit that bell notification. And until next week, let's keep it moving.